Back for Blood has landed, the spiritual successor for Left 4 Dead, and for a lot of stuff, if you know one, you know the other, but not everything. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things Back for Blood doesn't tell you. Starting off at number 10, the money grubber perk can totally break the game's economy. All the credit on this one goes to Reddit user DefiantMarsupial419 for this one. They're the ones that realize how overpowered this card can be. One of the earlier cards you can unlock, obviously, is the money grubber, which does doesn't sound that useful at first glance. Here's what it does though. Each time your team loots copper, you gain five additional copper, stacking up to a hundred additional copper. Here's the thing. There are a ton of copper pickups in this game, usually in amounts that are only 50 or hundred copper, but there's a lot of them. So the effect of this card can build up really fast. And remember, the amount of copper you pick up is shared with the team. So for every member with the card, the amount of bonus copper you get stacks as well. So what it boils down to is that that everyone is getting a ton of money if they've all got this card equipped, more than enough to get everything you want at the safe house stores and still have plenty of cash to spare. Having enough money to refill your health, top off your ammo, buy all the secondaries you need, and get the bonus perks can make the game much, much easier, because even on normal difficulty, called veteran in this game, it's not easy. And number nine is how to play the game solo and still get rewards. If there's one thing about this game, it's kind of a sore subject at the moment. It's the fact that you can't really earn supply points, which is the resource that allows you to unlock new cards in single player. Some people just want to play through the game with bots and still be able to go through the progression track, but normally you just can't do it in this game. If you play the solo mode, you're just not going to be unlocking anything. Some players did find a way to get around that though, basically forcing the game to play with bots in multiplayer mode rather than with other players like you're supposed to. How it works is pretty simple, but it's not a surefire thing. Reddit user Ichiko Tatsumura was able to pull this off by starting a public match, entering a game, leaving the match, and starting it up again by going to the create a run screen and starting where they left off from there. It doesn't always work, but eventually you'll get into a game with just bots. Another user offered a slower method that seems to work every time. User it's your boy Nate 33 says that you can create a match and wait the 10 minute time limit and it'll pretty much just throw you in a game with bots every time both of these options are kind of dick moves to the other people playing the game and trying to play the game with just bots even with the improved ai that we're seeing for them now it can be frustrating but if you absolutely have to play the game solo these are the few ways you can do it and number eight is how to kill snitches without alerting a horde. One of the most annoying enemies in this game is the snitch. If you shoot it, it calls down a horde on you and they can show up at the worst time. It might seem like there's a way to kill these things without having to deal with the horde afterwards, but it's actually possible to kill them and make it so they don't call a horde. It just takes a little team coordination. Basically, you wanna kill them as quickly as possible. There are a few ways to pull this off. One option is to have one player run up and melee them and then have everybody else shoot them. The stun from the melee attack should give you enough time to put them down before they call for backup. Another solid option is to just pelt them with grenades. Not pipe bombs because they're on a fuse, but grenades which explode on impact and do enough damage to kill them outright. If you got a sniper on your team who has some weak point bonus damage cards, that's also pretty effective. Like melee, a good shot can stun it and you have enough time to kill it. There's a lot of ways to kill a snitch, but it all really boils down to timing. You need the team to all start shooting at the same time and that's basically impossible to do unless you're talking over voice chat. Oh, and all also, if you've got the snitch mutation card, then this is all kind of pointless because if it's mutated, it will always call a horde whether you kill it or not. So make sure you know what mutations you've got active before you try any of this stuff. If it's mutated, it's better to just all around avoid them. And number seven, stun guns are surprisingly useful. Don't discount stun guns. They may not seem necessary, but they can save your life. Anytime you get grabbed, you can spend one of these things to instantly escape from it. Save them for the right time. If you've got your team surrounding you and can easily free you, don't waste it. Save them for when you're either alone or your team's incapacitated. That's when they're really useful. And that's all good, but maybe the best thing the stun gun does is how it completely invalidates one of the most annoying enemies in the game, the hawker. It's incredibly annoying to deal with when they pop up, but if you've got a stun gun, then you can escape from the goo instantly without using up the stun gun. You can escape from the spit attacks as many times as you want, as long as you've got one stun gun equipped. I don't know if it's intentional or not by the developers, but it works and we're not complaining. If you're doing a run and these guys keep popping up, having a stun gun on you can make things a lot easier. There is also a card that lets you escape from any grab as well. It's called Breakout, and while it's incredibly useful, it does take a while to escape the grab in comparison to a stun gun, which gets you out instantly every time. 
At number six is trauma damage. One thing new players seem to struggle with is trauma damage, especially with how it works when you get hit in this game. You take normal damage that can be healed, but also sometimes a small amount of trauma damage that you can't heal normally happens as well. To make matters worse, if you leave your normal damage unhealed, then the chance of taking trauma damage only gets higher. There's only so many players who just run around and try to wait until they're just about dead before healing, but in this game, that's the worst time to heal because you build up a ton of trauma damage in the meantime so what you really want to do is keep your health as high as possible uh, yeah that sounds like a big dub but seriously this means healing damage when it appears having a designated healer role on your team can make things a lot easier but if you don't just try to use healing items when you find them bandages don't heal a lot but it's better to top off your health now than save it for later certain medic cards can restore trauma and they're crazy good once you get them but it's still only by so much to remove a lot of trauma you need to find these health stations on walls. These things will fix trauma damage, so always be on the lookout for them. But because trauma can easily build up very fast, that makes pills one of the best healing items as well. They heal a lot, they ignore trauma, and with certain cards they can be really powerful. The main downside is that it's all temporary health, but it lasts for a while at least. The main takeaway here is that healing is important to survive. Don't just hoard that stuff, use it. At number 5, always have somebody carry a toolkit. You can unlock certain doors and cases with it, and on higher difficulties, having access to some of this stuff is almost required, so having one person carry a toolkit can be life-saving. Seriously, unlocking these storerooms can make certain sections much easier, like this room on the diner mission. It's got a ton of supplies and a health station inside. These doors always seem to appear in the same spot, so knowing when they show up is important. That way you can bring a toolkit when you need it, rather than wasting a slot on them all the time. The safe bet is that if there's some kind of horde event coming up, there's usually a supply closet somewhere nearby, so just keep an eye out for them and have somebody carry a toolkit, and it makes this game a lot easier on you. At number four, specialization is practically required for the veteran difficulty level or higher. Like veteran's hard. Recruit difficulty is not too difficult as long as you've got a team that's awake, but on veteran, you're really gonna need a team that knows what it's doing. A big part of that is specialization is basically necessary to succeed on veteran and nightmare. Think of this like a party in an MMO. You want your support characters and your damage healers. Here's the general framework. A healer, a scavenger, a weak point shooter, and a shotgun. The healer's obvious. Pick a character like mom or doc and load them up on cards that improve your healing abilities. The scavenger is a must as well. You need somebody to load up on scavenger cards and make items appear more frequently during your game because you will go through a ton of ammo on veteran. At very least, ammo scavenger is almost a requirement. Everything else with scavenger is good, but the ammo is really important. The other two are primarily damage dealers. Your main concern will be taking out the special infected. So having someone that does a ton of weak point damage is important. Give them a sniper rifle, load them up with bonus damage, weak point cards and things that improve sniper rifles a another thing you're going to want to do for a sniper is the two is one and one is none card which lets you equip two primaries sniper rifles are great for specials but not the best for regular zombies so being able to swap to an smg or something makes it a lot easier to defend yourself combine that with the admin reload which automatically reloads your weapon when you swap to a different and you'll never have to worry about reloading your sniper rifle again the shotgunner's main focus should be on stunning the special infected load them up with cards that make shotguns better, and try to get the attachment that makes staggering enemies better as quickly as you can. It's kind of just luck if the attachment shows up or not, but if you want to find the fast HP mag, the one that increases the bullet stumble, that's going to be the way to go because it stuns infected. These rules don't have to be super exact or anything. You can do what you want, but it's important that everyone uses different weapons so you don't just start running out of ammo. Seriously, the ammo situation on veteran can be rough. And number three, two almost necessary cards for veteran. Here's some cards that don't necessarily fit into the roles I was talking about earlier, but are insanely good for veteran difficulty or higher. I'm talking about these two cards specifically, uh, Down in Front and Hunker Down. Down in Front is incredibly useful for veteran. It makes it so you don't take or deal friendly fire damage while crouched, which is a game changer. Friendly fire can totally ruin a run on higher difficulties, so having a card that can eliminate it is great. Combine that with Hunker Down, that gives you a bonus for damage resistance and an accuracy bonus and it makes crouching a really useful thing to do there's plenty of other cards you'll want out there and it may take a while before you even get a chance to unlock these things but even if you're only taking 35 percent of friendly fire damage on veteran it still tacks up pretty quick so not having to worry about it is really good just be sure to actually crouch though
And number two, the melee chainsaw build. I'm not really sure how a viable melee only build in this game can really be, but it's fun at least. With the right combo of cards, the amount of damage you can inflict can get pretty ridiculous if anything. You can really mow down a horde with melee, even if taking on some of the special infected can be a pain. The key cards for this one are Battle Lust, Berserker, and Meth Head. Battle Lust is a starter card that's basically essential for any melee build. Being able to restore two health a kill adds up really fast. Berserker, increases attack and movement speed for every kill you get, while Meth Head makes you attack crazy fast, with the downside being you can't aim down sights, like at all. For a weapon, you'll want the Fire Axe. It's the best melee weapon in the game, easily. Everything else is good, but the Fire Axe is better. Combine that with the Mean Drunk, and you're even more ridiculous. It gives you a 75% melee damage bonus, but disables Sprint. Batter Up is a safer alternative, but the general thing here is use any card that improves melee in some way. The difference is kind of crazy when you look at it with all these cards you're just buzz sawing through zombies like they're nothing you'll still probably end up taking more damage than you're healing but at very least it's a hell of a lot of fun to try out i'm sure somebody is going to at some point do a run like this and it's going to be the most amazing thing to watch ever and i look forward to watching that because it will most likely not be me and at number one, the Left 4 Dead build. Here's one last goofy build to try out. This one might actually be really good though, if you're not too concerned with precision aiming. With Back 4 Blood being basically the spiritual successor to the Left 4 Dead series, it only makes sense they'd give you some cards to make the game feel a little bit more like you're playing Left 4 Dead. There's actually a lot of them here. The main things to look for are any mods that disable two things, sprinting and aim down sights. Yeah, there were sniper rifles in Left 4 Dead you could use, but normally you couldn't aim down sights and you definitely couldn't sprint. So take these both off makes the game feel a lot more like playing left for dead again stuff like quick kill that gives you a huge accuracy bonus killer instinct boosts weak point damage and a mag coupler gives you a big reload speed which boosts all disable aim down sights and all that it's all really good the meth head card definitely makes the melee feel closer to left for dead as well while marathon runner removes the movement penalties for strafing and walking backwards just like a more old school game like left for dead does if you're looking for a more arcade like experience these kinds of cards are what you want to go for like the melee build going all in on this may not be the best for higher difficulties but for just screwing around it can be really entertaining that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we have like brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is a subscription click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter falcon the hero see you next time right here on game Ranks.